Good morning, friends, and welcome to worship on this Sunday morning. We are glad you are joining us wherever you are, and we welcome you in the strong name of Jesus Christ. like a flowing stream, we receive living water that quenches our thirst. God's Spirit is for young and old, rich and poor, men and women, slave and free, all receive God's gift. This is the day for a new Pentecost. We hear God's message, we see visions, and we dream dreams. How amazing are all the works of God. May this worship please our Creator. Friends, let us worship God. Friends, hear the call to confession. It is so easy to slip into the sinful ways we used to know. It is so easy to get sidetracked from what is God's will for us. Confession brings us back and forgiveness cleanses us. So I will read the prayer of confession. Eternal God, we admit we take for granted all the things in our lives. We take for granted getting up in the morning and health. We take for granted that we can go to a supermarket and buy food. We take for granted your love and mercy. We think we have no need of you. Send your spirit, O oh Lord, that we have our thirst quenched. Save us from our old ways and let us begin anew. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Take a moment for silent confession. Hear the assurance of pardon. In hope we are saved, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, intercedes for us, and guides us into all truth. God restores us to fullness of life and offers us hope through forgiveness. Feel the newness of forgiveness in your lives. Believe and receive your pardon. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. For the sermon today, I would like to open with a word of prayer. Would you please pray with me? Dear God, I thank you for this day, and I thank you for this time gathered together to worship you. I ask that you give us all ears to hear and eyes to see you in your great work. May my teaching drop as rain, for I will proclaim the name of the Lord and ascribe to you, O oh God. In your name I pray, amen. Quick question for you. What is one of the most memorable gifts you have ever received so far in your lifetime? 
Or what is the greatest gift you've ever received so far in your lifetime? Was it a brand new car on your birthday? An engagement ring on Christmas? Money? Clothes? Maybe even those dreaded socks you get as a gift each year? I don't blame them. All of us have memorable gifts, which were given to us from someone special. For me, my most memorable gift happened on Easter Sunday, 10 years ago. 10 years ago, I received the gift of a Yorkie puppy. This gift became my most memorable gift because it was from my mom. And at the time, little did I know that this would be not only the last holiday I spent with her before she passed away, but it was also the last gift I received from my mom. And in thinking back, it was pretty memorable. For years, I was begging for a puppy, like any young teenager would do. Different holidays, like Christmas came and went, no puppy. New Year's came and went, no puppy. Even my birthday came and went. You know what? Still no puppy. But finally, on Easter Sunday, I was fast asleep in my room, when out of nowhere, there was a puppy in my bed. I woke up to this little creature licking and crawling all over my face. My mom surprised me with a gift that I had been asking for for years. And I was finally here. Ten years later, my mom is gone, and that little puppy has become an old dog. But one thing always stays in my mind, of that being the most memorable gift that has ever been given to me. I have nothing but love from my mom. Now, whenever I look at Lily, that's a dog's name, I think of my mom and that moment when she gave me the gift of a puppy out of love. Now, today we celebrate another great and memorable gift that was given out of love, love to the church the gift of the Holy Spirit. And today we celebrate Pentecost, which is also known as the formation of the church or the birthday of the church. How the church itself came into being and the proclaiming of the truth of Jesus Christ. As some of you might know, Pentecost happens 50 days after Easter. And each week we've, since we celebrated Easter, we have celebrated Jesus' victory over death his resurrection into new life, his ascension into heaven, ending with today, with the gift of the Holy Spirit being poured out. We are reminded on this day that the Holy Spirit is given through the love of God and the Son to all of us today. Pentecost is a reminder of that love from God so that we will always remember it and feel the Holy Spirit dwelling with us. With that, I ask that you listen and hear as I read the word of the Lord from Acts 2, 1 to 13, and 38 through 39. Hear the word of the Lord. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all gathered together in one place. And suddenly, a sound like blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews, from every nation under heaven. And when they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all those who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? People from all over, Egypt and parts of Lydia and Cyrene, visitors from Rome, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, have they had too much wine? 
Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. Amen. Now during this time, a great festival known as Shavuot was taking place in Jerusalem. This festival was a spring harvest festival, which was celebrated by the Israelites. This festival was one of the three great pilgrim feasts that every Jewish male was required to attend, which means that many people would be in attendance. We hear that the disciples were all gathered together in one place when, out of nowhere, a violent wind came from heaven. This wind reminds us of a scene from the creation story in Genesis and the beginning of a new life. And as the disciples were sitting in the place, Tongues of fire came upon them and rested on each of their heads. They were then filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages that, that, than their own. They began to speak the languages of the people who were around them in the city below. Now at the beginning and in this place, the disciples were feeling lonely and afraid after Jesus left. Now, instead of living in fear and loneliness, they were filled with the Spirit as a reminder that Jesus would always be with them through the gift of the Holy Spirit from God. The disciples received many gifts along with the Holy Spirit, including wisdom, courage, and confidence to continue on with their ministry and the ministry of Jesus and build God's kingdom here on earth. After the loud, violent wind came from heaven, a crowd in the town was filled with great confusion on what was going on. Not only did they hear the wind, but heard the disciples, or the Galileans, speaking the languages of the people in the crowd. Languages from the Cappadocians, languages from Asia and Egypt, and even an Arab language. They all, they all heard the apostles declaring the message of God in their own language. The crowd began to question this. Why were they hearing this? Were the disciples drinking too much wine? Are they drunk? To answer the confusion among the crowd, the disciple Peter addresses the crowd to answer any of the questions they have. Peter gives a long speech to address this memorable gift of the Holy Spirit, which was given. Peter states these words, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now this great memorable gift was the gift of the Holy Spirit, and it contained a promise, a promise for all, a promise given to the, all the disciples, to the people, and it still remains with us here today. This memorable gift from God we carry with us through the presence of the Holy Spirit, and we feel the presence of God through his promise and the gift of the Holy Spirit. And like the disciples, we are given the task to continue on the ministry of Jesus and build the kingdom of God in this world. We too, like the disciples, have courage, we have wisdom, we have the confidence from the Holy Spirit, given from God, to help us continue on in the ministry of Jesus to all. We can show the world the kingdom of God here on earth through the great and memorable gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit, which remains alive with us here, now and always. And like my mom gave me my puppy out of pure love, God gave us the Holy Spirit out of love. Love from God to the people of God. The love of the most memorable gift given from God the Father, through Jesus Christ the Son. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three in one. This gift remains and is still with us 
and will continue to be with us. Amen. Um, that I have from all of you. Um, announcements would be that uh, we are so thankful that Abby is here taping, that Al and Candy and Ken and Cassie were here for the music. We're grateful for that. It is also Cassie's last week with us, um, and rest assured that we are going to bring her back uh, so we can honor her in the way that we traditionally do uh, when we have people here. So at some point in the summer, we're going to bring Cassie back and we're going to honor her presence, her year with us. Uh, so never fear that we will, we will do that in person, though. As far as announcements, I would like to ask that you would send in your questionnaire. Now that we are in the green in Allegheny County, uh, the governor said that we're able to open up on a limited basis. And so we're trying to gauge on what that limited basis needs to look like as far as worship. So that questionnaire kind of is broad, but it gives us an understanding of where you are coming from as far as your comfort level. So we need your input. We need all the information that we can get to make a wise decision on how we open up and worship together as the body of Christ, as the family of God. So your information is important. So please return it. You can mail it back to us. You can stick it in the mailbox. I'm, I'm looking at the every day to check and see if people's feedback is back. You can leave it in the blue barrel on the Nobles Town Road, Town Road section of the porch. You can slip it under the door, whatever it is. Um, you can put it in my mailbox on 16 Sunnyside. However you want to do it, please get that information back to me. We would really appreciate it. Uh, and then I will send out email blasts, make phone calls on what we plan on doing uh, for worship. Uh, in the next couple of weeks. So thank you. As far as prayer requests, um, Grace Corba's friend, Christine, her husband had his surgery this past week. They did get the spot of cancer off his lung. They believe they got it all. He's resting from surgery, but there needs to be a second surgery. So prayers for Christine, prayers for her husband. Little Blake is home. Uh, and all seems to be going well. I have not got an update this week, but no news is good news. Uh, so prayer uh, for Blake has worked. Also, Terry McAdams sent out a really nice email uh, to everybody uh, getting her update. She's been undergoing radiation treatments. She has one more, uh, and then she has to have a CT scan. And then we'll see whether that, um, that radiation has helped in her pancreatic cancer. So those are some of the things that I have gotten word of this past week. 
So if you will, will you pray with me? Gracious God, we just thank you for the opportunity to offer up our prayers to you. We ask for wisdom as we go forward in worship. We want to make sure, Lord, that we gather together as the people of God, but we also want to make sure that we keep our people safe. So we ask for wisdom. We ask for discernment, Lord, on how we need to do that. Uh, we ask for wisdom for our leaders. We ask, Lord, for your spirit, the same spirit that we honor here on this Pentecost Sunday. That same spirit will enable us to move forward without fear uh, as we go forward in worship and, and continuing to be your body. So I just pray for the leaders, Lord, that we might know the will of the people and your will in going forward in this. We pray for protection, Lord, uh, as we figure out what to do uh, and the safeguards needed, Lord, uh, in order to do what we think is best for our people. So we just pray, Lord, for the whole situation. We pray for Christine, Lord, and her husband, and we're grateful that the surgery went well this past week, but we ask that um, he would heal properly, uh, readying himself for the next surgery. So we pray for Christine. We're grateful that Grace has brought him uh, and her, Christine, to our attention. We're grateful, Lord, that little Blake seems to have stabilized his temperature, and we continue to pray for Julie and Sean and the whole Leonard family uh, as they get used to little Blake being amongst them. And we pray for Terry, Lord. We were so grateful to hear uh, and get an update on her uh, that she's able to get out now and take walks and the radiation that she's undergoing. Uh, we pray, Lord, that it's doing its job and, and shrinking the tumor even more. Uh, and so we pray for that CAT scan in the near future. We pray for all those, Lord, who are undergoing cancer treatment. The cancer hasn't stopped through COVID. Uh, and so we just ask that you would be with all those who are undergoing treatment. We especially ask your blessing and your uh, continued um, presence on Cassie as she is leaving us and going on to uh, her third year in seminary as she's completed her second year in her field education requirements. Uh, we just ask, Lord, that you would continue to gift her with the gifts uh, that you have given her in her, call, in her call to ministry. So we're grateful for the time that she spent with us, with the relationships that we have formed with her. And we just pray, Lord, we would continue that relationship via email and text and visits, Lord. Uh, so we just ask your special blessing upon Cassie and upon Josh as they uh, prepare for their relationship to go forward in marriage in 2021. We pray for graduates everywhere, Lord. We were so grateful to be able to honor our graduates on Thursday night and the hard work of Abby as she put all their names on the sign. So we pray for our seniors, especially the seniors in our community, Lord. And we, we know about the disappointment uh, that they must be feeling, but we know, Lord, that you have bigger and better things for them. Uh, and so we just ask that uh, they know that uh, and they will have plenty of time to celebrate all their accomplishments later on when it is safe to do so. So we pray for Allie and Mac and Haley and um, Jake and Aubrey and Connor and Kristoff here in uh, Renardale, Lord, we ask for your blessing upon them. We ask this all in the name of Jesus, who taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, let us give of our tithes and offerings. If you have not sent in for 
um, May. We ask that you would do so. June is just around the corner. Uh, and a lot of our giving drops off in the summer just because of vacations and people going away for weekends, even though this is a weird kind of year, we still need to be able to pay the bills. So we would just ask that you would give of your tithes and offerings, either online or being able to be sent in. Let us pray over our offerings. We bring our offerings, O Lord, as a token of our gratitude for your graciousness to us. May your glory be proclaimed in all we do and in all we give. May your spirit move in us today to spread your love and to do your will. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Face towards you and give you peace in this day and forevermore.